Well, we do have a quorum, so I am going to call to order the Spokane Park Board of February 10th, 2022 by WebEx. And we have all members present nearly. We just have myself, Bob Anderson, Garrett Jones, Nick Sumner, Greta Gilman, Sally Lodato, Jerry Sperling is absent excused. We have Barb Ritchie, Hannah Kitts, Kevin Brownlee. I don't believe we have Council Member Bingle yet. Don't see him on the list. And for the record, Richard Chase, his term has ended. It ended on the 1st of February, and he is interregnum until his position is filled. Okay, so we're going to move on. Any additions or deletions to the agenda? Hearing none, any public comment? Hearing none, we will move on to the consent agenda. I believe, is this not true, Greta, that we have one item out of the seven that needs to be removed? I was not aware. Okay. So the uh, Vitsky Excavating Company change order, I think, needed adjusting in terms of its amount, so it needs to be removed and put on back under land to have that corrected. All right, so move, move back to land it, uh, for next month. Uh, no, just under the main discussion. In my report. Oh, yes, just out of consent. So that reduces the consent agenda items to six. Are there any other items that park board members would like to have removed for discussion? Hearing nothing, I move that we approve six agenda items for the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. Okay. Okay, there are several seconds. Yes. So all right. Um, all those in favor of the consent agenda as presented signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? The consent agenda passes. Thank you everyone. Today we have with us Owen Esperus from the Spokane Youth and Senior Centers Association. It's their quarterly update, and I always look forward to hearing this. Owen, take it away. Well, thank you very much. I'm the newbie of this association. Uh, I'm with Mid-City Concerned Senior Center, Meals on Wheels, Spokane. Uh, Beth Alcorn retired at the end of December, so she's on the good side of life. Um, and she's actually out traveling the country for four months on a camper with her husband. So, boy, we're going to she's having a good time visiting all kinds of places because they are hikers and adventurous like that. So, and I got to take over the range. So, thank you for having me. You're going to have to bear with me as I'm the newbie. Um, but I am excited for this opportunity. Are we good? Great. Perfect. All right. As you guys already know, uh, I get the fun part of actually Q4 wrap up for the entire year. Uh, you can see the association members here listed Corbin, uh, East Central MLK, Hilliard, ourselves, Mid City, Northeast Youth Center, Southwest Spokane, Project Joy, Cento Senior Center. Uh, south side and west central. Moving on to the numbers, I just want to show and really highlight the impact and look at the total numbers. Um, the attendance over uh, 3,340 uh, seniors and youth that have attended various programming and really 28,000 uh, hours of volunteer time to make it all run. I know for my organization, we're lean and mean and could not do uh, half the stuff we do without the volunteer engagement we have. So uh, fun. I mean, I'm kind of a, a, uh, a data nerd anyways, but if you look at the quarters, you can see how uh, the Delta variant and Omicron variant really affected uh, attendance throughout the year just by looking that build into Q2 and then that slowly the decline from Q to the Q3 and Q4. 
We'll start with our senior programs. Uh, first, we have Hilliard Senior Center. Hmm, huh, my notes didn't come up, so I'm going to wing it. Sorry. Um, let me see if I can find all the notes I had. Well, as you can see, uh, Hilliard Senior Center uh, continues to do things, uh, arts and crafts, uh, fitness classes are really popular there. Uh, on the top right, they have some fun travel photos that they've done. And then really they're working hard to continue to grow their daily recreation activities and services. Uh, I got the opportunity to visit that center personally, you know, like everybody else, attendance is down because of, uh, you know, COVID and that whole situation. So everybody is really working hard to build um, their programs and it's actually a great opportunity to kind of hit some reset buttons too and, and try different things. Next, we have Central uh, Senior Center. They were able to finish their year with uh, some holiday meals. You can see the president up in the corner over there with a nice holiday necklace around his neck. And even though there's some rough weather, they got to attend some lunch or some uh, members' favorite locations for lunch and breakfast. They uh, did a lot as far as collecting donations for their toys for tops. You can see that in the bottom photo. And then they've started collecting bids to redo their uh, kitchen floor and hopefully they're gonna have that project completed by the end of 2020. Next is Corbin Senior Activity Center. Um, it's all about fun as you can see all the, all the smiles and groups there. Uh, they hosted free meals for veterans. They've, they did a little bit of travel during this time. You can see Santa was a visitor uh, and brought some old and new friends together. Uh, Corbin uh, Senior Center is all about empowering uh, and engaging their senior community and openly invite everybody to come and participate. Next to Southside Community Center, uh, you can see they did their first Halloween hallway event. There's some great costumes. Uh, my favorite picture personally is the one with the dinosaur right there in the middle. Uh, it was well received, lots of candy, um, decorations and prizes. They also had an opportunity to do their, bring back their annual Santa breakfast. Uh, he made a time out of his busy schedule to come and stop in. And obviously, you can see by some of those fun smiles on the right hand side, it was a huge hit with the families. This is us, it's in concern. Uh, we also celebrated our veterans with certificates and, and a ceremony. Uh, Santa also took time out of his day to come visit us. He's very busy during that season. Uh, we had a lot of food festivities and gifts. Uh, you could just go after throughout the facility. It was a lot of fun. Project Joy. In November, they got to start back up their big group rehearsal. So that's amazing for them. Uh, they did about 34 performances for this quarter. And I, my, my facility actually booked them. And so my, <laughs> I'm part of that 34 right there because we definitely use them. Um, and I know our seniors love them to death when they come in. So we appreciate our partnership with Project Joy and they get to share all their amazing talents uh, with the senior and care center community. We'll jump to youth programs. Northeast Youth Center, you can see they have lots of fun. That first picture is the Harlem Globe Charter. So they got to come and show some of their basketball skills. And they also did a little bit of motiv uh, motivational speaking that the children really liked. Um, you can see that there's a veteran there. The kids wrote letters and sent them off to veterans. And they actually got to, uh, they received uh, I think a recognition. 
special recognition award uh, for doing so. And then as always, Santa makes makes uh, time for all the kids and all of us. So he's there as well. Uh, one of the things they really wanted to bring up was the save the date auction for March 12th at Northern Quest Casino. You can see there's a uh, website address there to get tickets. Uh, if you're interested in that, go ahead and log in and, and see what that's all about. Next is West Central Community Center. Um, the middle one is a little blurry, but they went to the Trampoline Park Flying Squirrel. You can see there was a huge uh, group of them who went out there and had a good time. Uh, they got to participate in some Skyhawks sports program that was free of charge. And they're really focused on learning life skills through sports, so it's really neat. This is Andrew, the one on the left with his thumbs up. He was once a youth uh, participant at the Southwest uh, Spokane Community Center. He is now their director. So it's cool to see how some folks come into the program and then get to give back by, by taking the leadership role. Uh, now He now stops by with his son, and you can see some pictures with his son there and how the youth have really loved their visits with him. Next, we have East Central or MLK Community Center. Uh, they're just getting back into the swing of things and they're um, doing in-person services at, at the center. You can see those two pictures on the left. Those folks are doing some uh, fitness activities, stretching and things like that. And then they also had a little Christmas celebration on the right. And as always, we want to thank the board for their continued support. Um, you can see the impact on that second slide with the number of activities and participants, as well as the volunteer hours. I personally have a saying, you're only as strong as the network you surround yourself with. And in nonprofits, that is so true. So we appreciate uh, the support to help our youth and seniors in our community. And, you know, quite frankly, it takes all of us. So. Once again, thank you for what you guys do for us. Oh, and thank you. You did a great job. I think that the newbie gets a round of applause. So thank <laughs> you very much. I always enjoy hearing what Cisco does. And I think what you all do is so important. And you're absolutely right about the necessity of good volunteers. And without it, frankly, the city of Spokane couldn't run. Right. So, okay. um, this is what makes it a great place to live. Thank you. Well thank done. you very much. All right, Mark Buning, that's going to be a hard act to follow, but you get to. Well, you know, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, I just wanted to let everybody know February is the month of no financials. And I know some of you are thinking that's probably the best financial report of the year. But we are at the um, we're still closing out last year, the 13th month activity. So as as when the, as long as those are going on, it's very difficult to close out January because there's a lot of interplay between the two. But so historically or typically, we don't give a, a February or a January financial report. But next month, you get a double whammy. You get the end of year report through 2021 and through February of 2022. So this is my month to, to concentrate on year end stuff and not give a financial report. And that is one of the best financial reports I've ever heard. I love it. I love it. Thank you very much. Thank All you. Right. We now have two special discussion, actually one action item and one special discussion item. The first is the um, yearly nomination of park board officers. Last month, the ad hoc committee was formed for nominations. Bob Anderson chairing and Bob has the report. Or maybe it's Hannah. Who knows? I think Bob. It's me. <laughs> The Officer Nomination Committee, consisting of Sally Lodato, Anna Kitts, Kevin Brownlee, and myself, submit this recommendation for 2022 Park Board Officers. President Jennifer Ogden, Vice President Bob Anderson, and Secretary Garrett Jones. 
All right, there is the nominating slate. So that is a motion to approve the slate as presented. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you very much. Sounds like Sally. And yes. uh, any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 And opposed? All right, motion passes. Thank you very much. You all are gluttons for punishment, wanting Bob and I back. But I have to say, again, it's a real honor to serve with this group of really fine people, and your support means a lot to me, and I know to Bob, too. So thank you very much, and onward into the fray. Here we go. All right, now, Fiona Dixon has for us a marketing update. Fiona? Thank you, Jennifer. Happy to be here today to share um, a communications update. If you'll bear with me, I'll share a few slides that kind of look back on our 2021 efforts and then a brief look forward into 2022 as well. Wanted to make sure um, that you're aware of who our team is. Um, are you all able to see my slides? Perfect. So our team um, is, I'll call it small but mighty. So Josh and I work primarily on the parks and recreation side, and then Amy and Regan primarily on the riverfront side, although we work collaboratively throughout the year on a lot of projects. And then we're fortunate to have a local agency, DH, they're really skilled in helping guide our media buys and our strategy. And then we also get to work with the city communication team. They have a number of um, resources that I'll highlight here in this PowerPoint too. And a quick overview of our purpose. Um, we're really twofold. We're public information and we're marketing. And so this is kind of the, the different elements we look at when we're looking at our goals and our strategies. One is to increase um, revenue utilization and registrations, always in alignment with whatever the goals are of the department because we're here to serve the different departments within Parks and Recreation. Obviously, um, engagement, we're looking to increase participation in projects and volunteerism. And we want to make sure our community feels informed, uh, that, that they feel like they know about projects that are impacting them and that they are aware of opportunities that their tax dollars are funding. Trust is obviously a very important element. We want people to feel like we're excellent stewards of taxpayer dollars, and we want them to feel pride and affinity for parks and recreation. That kind of comment you hear from people that, um, that move here like, oh, your park system is so incredible. Those of us who grew up here sometimes take it for granted. So we wanna help ensure that locals feel that sense of pride too. And finally, partnerships. We look to grow partnerships and sponsorships to cross promote our programs and spaces. So let's take a look at some 2021 highlights. I'll kind of touch on each of the tool kind of categories that we use and share a few examples of things that, um, that worked or maybe didn't work for us last year. So print and digital ads are obviously one tool that we use. Um, here's an example of some different ads that we had and so different places where we place these ads. So Spokesman and Inlander summer camp guides are obviously a really important place to look and you'll see that we mirror the look of our guides into the ads so that people make that connection. Uh, we used um, the Inlander annual manual, their best of their winter guide. They've just got some really popular um, publications that we make sure we're a part of. Uh, for golf, we purchased the cover of Pacific Northwest Golfer Magazine. Uh, this comes so you get to purchase the cover and an inside story, and this really helps us tell the story of our irrigation improvements, and it helps us reach 150,000 golfers in our target demographic. Spokane Quarterly and Living Magazine is another great tool, especially for our numeric skate ribbon, and then we use our quarterly activity guides, which we'll talk about a little bit more, too. For direct mail and distribution, you'll see an example here of some of the direct mail that we did. We did a postcard uh, for golf for our holiday promotions. We purchased a list, which is something we don't often do. Um, it didn't really work out for us, but again, it was kind of something worth trying, and we learn and we adjust and, and move forward from there. Riverfront um, did a spring promotion, and then we started distributing our activity guides, not only through households through mail, but also at grocery stores and convenience stores so people across town can pick up that printed guide. Earned media, um, as a lot of you know, is another big area of focus for us. Uh, we spend quite a bit of time on this, on this area um, for good reason, because it does help us reach a really broad demographic. So here are a few highlights of some coverage that different areas got. Uh, Riverfront had some great coverage for community engagement programs, attractions, concerts. I mean, who can miss that Primus um, cover story on the spokesman? Uh, the campaign for Riverfront Spokane got some nice coverage. And then we had two really big ribbon cuttings in Riverfront um, at the North Bank 
and the Vietnam Veterans Memorial that got some good coverage too. Um, for recreation, we had some summer guide preview coverage. We had a camp sampler where a reporter came along and sampled several different outdoor camp activities. Uh, that's so valuable to us. Um, we had quite a bit of coverage on overcoming aquatics challenges. And this is a quick example of how Earned Media can really help us meet some target goals. So we, we found out early on that we were going to have some challenges related to hiring lifeguards. So we got out in front of it with an Earned Media um, campaign, a social media campaign, and within a couple of days of that dropping, we had 50, I think over 50 applications for lifeguards just like that. So again, it was, it was a fairly low cost strategy and it really helped us um, be able to deliver on pools because that, that was a threat, right? We weren't gonna be able to offer the amount of free swim to our community if we didn't have lifeguards. So we love working with the recreation team to do things like that and deliver um, some results. Our golf season opening is always big news and uh, water conservation coverage too. And then um, kayak rentals and river shuttle service, you'll see in the upper right corner, Ryan um, working with a reporter to get to experience our kayak rentals and really understand what that was about. For natural resources, uh, you'll remember the January 2021 storm that got quite a bit of coverage around what we were doing to ensure recovery for our damage. Uh, community tree plantings are always great news. Hard to beat fuels reduction when you've got cute goats. Cute goats make great coverage. So we got some good coverage there. For park planning, our master plan was obviously a big, big project for us. And we saw some nice media coverage there as well as water conservation, our koi project, koi pond project, and new playground equipment is happy news. And finally for operations, um, you'll see the parks and the pandemic cover story on the spokesman. That was an important story because it really did take a kind of a comprehensive look at how Parks was adjusting to meet the needs of a community amidst COVID and how, those, um, how our core service model was really able to respond to a community even amidst a lot of, uh, of restrictions and still deliver great services and products. Organic land management um, got some great coverage too. You'll see we're on the cover of Parks and Rec Business Magazine, which I love that because it helps position our staff as experts in their field, which they really are. And we love to help tell that story and to end the year, some great holiday light show programming uh, is, is just a great season ender. So in total, we did 58 press releases, lots and lots of interviews, and there's a software called Decision that measures your publicity value and tracks your media. Um, and we had $4.5 million in earned media value with over 900 million impressions. So again, this is an area where we spend a lot of, a lot of our time for good reason. Another area where we're really dedicated with some resources is social media. So we have 100 thousand followers across our platforms. And that is a huge, huge number when you think about the size of Spokane. Um, and this is really because Josh and Regan know what they're doing. They become um, very proficient in social media and they follow the trends. So 16% follower growth over the last year, that's because of the types of posts they're doing. And they're, they're always looking at the algorithms and adjusting. So they're not just out to sell, 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 revenue generating. They're looking at those other purposes, that engagement, fostering the, the volunteerism and the passion for our parks. And so you'll see a 3 million post reach, 25,000 clicks that take people into an action uh, to learn more or to register, and then 18,000 comments and engagements. Those numbers are really a point of pride. And again, Josh and Regan are just rock stars at social media. And same goes with the website, 1.5 million visits at spokaneparks.org. The top pages are uh, Riverfront. They get the top three pools and golf tee times. Uh, the numeric skate ribbon and Skyway pages alone saw 170,000 views. And when we look at recreation, that page saw 37,000 views. And what we love about this is how much time people are spending. They're spending five minutes looking through that digital guide and using the flip book to go through and, and look at classes. So that's a great, that's a really great sign. Um, and one final example for our website, you know, our parks master plan was a project page that we stood up simply to really get information out about what the plan was and to gather feedback for the survey. 13,000 views on a project page. I mean, that's just, that's really phenomenal. And to get, you know, the engagement that we did on that page with over 5,000 survey responses and engagements was was pretty awesome. We've got a great website team at the city that really helps us with search optimization. And that's a big part of why these numbers are so good. Digital marketing is another area where we spend some time. Our database is very healthy at 60,000 people. We're proud of our low unsubscribe rate here because we're really thoughtful about the kind of content that we put out. 
Our city newsletter that, um, that is managed by the city communication team is another great tool we use to reach a lot of people. And then we also pay the school district to be part of their email list too, so we can send emails out about our activity guides. Here's another big win for us this year, our Google Search Buy. So again, our website team is phenomenal at search engine optimization for people who are looking for Spokane Parks and Recreation things to do. But we thought about how do we capture people that don't know they're looking for us? They know they're looking for something related to us, but they don't know that we're the answer. We want them to find us, right? So we found a way to work with DH. We did a Google Search Buy, and I don't want to give away all of our shop secrets, but we had really great results here of getting people to our page, 125 impressions with a click-through rate of 12%. So when you look at that national average rate of less than 2%, a 12% click rate is a great sign. It means we're getting in front of people that might not be thinking about us otherwise and getting them engaged with, with our content. So that's a strategy we'll continue to use and adjust. Um, just a couple more slides here are collateral. We're always looking to capture photos that really help tell the story of our experiences. So you'll see we dedicate a good amount of resources to photos and videos because, again, those tell the story of what it means to be part of Spokane Parks and Recreation. Uh, we've got interpretive signs. Uh, you'll see this one here is about event spaces for rent. So when you're walking through the park, people will, will consider maybe having their wedding or birthday party there. We've spent time on our interpretive science, helping tell the story of Riverfront Park. And Regan's done just a beautiful job creating these meaningful moments where you come into a space and you learn more about it and you leave with a better understanding and appreciation of being there. Um, and then some other activity guides you'll see. This is a, somewhere we spent some, some good resources this year, too, a Riverfront, a new map and brochure that's really an evergreen piece that will carry for many years and tells the story of the new Riverfront Park because it's just not what it used to be. Um, sponsorships and partnerships, I can't say enough about Amy. Um, she just knows how, how, how sponsorships and partnerships work. She, um, her and her team garnered $166,000 in corporate partnerships, um, which is just incredible. And you'll see some other examples there. Just one other I want to call out. Um, this calendar in the lower right is uh, Chris Bovey. Um, you're familiar with his vintage prints of Spokane. So Josh took it upon himself to come up with this idea of creating posters for all of several of our different parks and then putting them into a calendar. And it's a phenomenal local pride piece. And the money raised from that goes to park planning projects. So the initiative there um, to see that project through, it's just, we've just got such talent on our team and it's just, I'm, I'm just excited by it. This is our final slide for 2021. This is our TV and streaming recap. Uh, Cable 5 is just phenomenal. We've got so much talent in house. They help us tell short news style stories and they help us with promotional content and it's all free of charge for us. So we could not, we could not do better than the Cable 5 team. Um, we also did some TV buys just to reach a broader audience. So for Riverfront and Recreation, we did a broadcast buy um, that reached 1.3 million impressions. And when you look at the 18 plus demographic in Spokane, we reached almost 50% of 18 plus people in Spokane with, the, with that TV buy. So again, that's just a great, um, great value for our dollar. And Gulf similarly saw some really great, uh, great results there. So thanks for bearing with me. That's a long list. It's a year's worth of work with a really great team. And I'm happy to share these highlights with you. A quick look ahead. We're going to employ a lot of these same strategies that we did in 2021, looking at what worked. A couple tweaks we'll make, really looking at digital experiences and how to streamline and make sure people find what they need. Um, and just tracking campaign effectiveness. We're always trying to find out, you know, what was the return on investment for that? And any way we can measure that is something we're looking to do. And here are some key, kind of key themes based on what we're hearing from our departments and their areas of focus. So thank you for your time. I'm happy to answer questions either now or obviously um, after the meeting. Okay, I'm allowed. Um, uh, <laughs> um, you don't blow your horn enough, lady, you and your team. We should have heard yeah. this. We should be hearing this every year at the beginning of every year. And this should be part of every part, new park board member's orientation. Seriously, because I learned so much about where else I can look, what else I should be looking for, and I've been on the park board for three plus, no, four years. Um, and so um, this, there's a lot of information here that I had no idea about, so okay. I'm fairly well versed. So um, this is phenomenal, phenomenal work. Well done. Thank you. 
we've got a great team and I think we can be better about pausing and saying, here's where, here's what we've done. And, and Jennifer, you and I were talking offline. We'll do a quarterly marketing report. That's just part yes. of your packets that gives you some recap, but I appreciate the opportunity each year. Thank you. Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, that's a hard act to follow and I have to follow it. Lordy. Okay. So <laughs> committee reports, the urban forestry tree committee met um, and uh, it was a good meeting because Katie Kosanke very succinctly uh, gave us the 2021 annual report. It was a, a good way to catch up on what's been going on. A lot has been going on in urban forestry. Over 1,000, specifically 1,023 trees have been planted throughout the area with partnerships with the Spokane Lands Council, some of them in West Central, the Spokane International Academy. There was an Earth Day seedling drive through event. Over a 1,000 seedlings were given away, and leftover trees were given to the city of Malden to help them replant after their terrible, terrible fire. So that is a really feel-good uh, opportunity there. Um, 48 trees planted with the Lands Council through Spokanopy. Um, there were restoration plantings in Comstock and Audubon. Um, Bartlett Tree Experts has been an excellent partner with us in these areas. And Councilmember Bingle, I, by the way, I forgot to say welcome when you joined us a while back, but uh, there were tree plantings at the On Track Academy and Pacific Education Institute in your area, in your district. I want to give a shout out to the Evergreen Mountain Bike Alliance. They planted 1,100 ponderosa pine trees at Camp Sakani. Again, an attempt to reforest and help us recover from a bad fire, and that was through Conservation Futures funding. The uh, crews that salvaged the blowdown at Comstock Park and in other areas, this is our Park Ops crew, thank you, Al and team, uh, salvaged about $20,000 worth of lumber there. Um, so that was a good reuse of a bad situation. Uh, the neighbors around Comstock Park, by the way, uh, were thrilled with the fast work cleaning up from that um, devastation. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the highlights of the annual work plan for 2022, we hope, is the Susie Stevens Trail Project. Uh, there are, of course, ongoing staff development and trainings and certifications and such. Uh, there are a number of neighborhoods that are on the docket for priority treatment this year, Comstock Park, Underhill, Nevada Heights, Benbur, Grandview, and the Logan Peace Park. So those are just some highlights. A lot is going on. I won't go through all of it. The minutes are on the website, uh, and so um, I commend them to you. I want to thank our urban forestry tree, tree team. Um, our urban forestry Committee is going to be re-envisioned. Kevin Brownlee is going to join with me and staff in working on a brainstorming session to sort of widen the view of that committee and incorporate a more horticultural focus. I look forward to that meeting. So the uh, golf committee, Jerry is not here, but I believe Jerry, um, Bob Anderson is here to talk for Jerry. Yes, I am. The, the golf committee met via WebEx Tuesday, February 8th at 8 a.m. The action item for the 2022 chemical fertilizer blanket order was approved and sent to today's board as part of the consent agenda. Mike Sloan, City of Spokane Director of Innovation Technology Services Department, met with the committee to discuss delays preventing implementing the online tea time booking with credit card updates. Departmental staffing inadequacies, some due to COVID, were a primary reason for lack of the expected progress in 2021. Mike pledged to improve communications and develop staffing redundancies to cover when golf's primary support technician is unable to work. Hardware and software changes need to be made on site at our four courses, and Mike described that as a time consuming work. Yeah. Nick Hammond stated the significant $400,000 contribution from utilities has made possible the 60% completion status for the downriver irrigation project. 16 holes will be available for spring opening. They projected full opening before May 1st. Andy Boyd updated the committee on the development of Friends of Spokane Golf and their plans for fundraising. Andy shares a passion for golf, similar to what other 
community leaders have for their groups. It will be an exciting year sitting with Friends of Golf with their plans. For those that don't know Andy, he contacted us to see if we could use help fundraising for golf. He doesn't, he doesn't live in Spokane, but he comes back here to play summer golf. I forget where he said he's now. I know for a while he was in Jamaica or somewhere, but he still attends our meetings virtually. He's in um, Houston. Yeah, that's where you're right. He lives in Houston, but so much passion. It's, again, another one of those people that's just fun to be around. Fiona presented a comprehensive recap of her team's marketing efforts for golf, including plans for the upcoming golf show, February 19th and 20th at the Spokane Convention Center. And obviously, she did a much better job of presenting that than I just did. The next golf meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, March 8th, via WebEx at 8 a.m. And before that, hopefully, some of our courses will be open for play. Great. Thank you. And I forgot to mention that the next Urban Forestry meeting will be March 1st. So there we go. All right. Now we have Land Committee. Greta, and you do have an action item. I think I have two, as I just learned beginning of this meeting. So yes, land committee met on February 2nd via WebEx, and we had four action items at the meeting, um, two of which were on our consent agenda today. And as I understand it, two are on the main agenda today. Uh, one of them is uh, MLTA design services contract for the Liberty Park Playground. And I believe Barry is here to make a presentation on that nice work they're doing. Yes. Mark. Thank you, Greta. Um, I pulled up the briefing paper on MLTA, which is Mike Terrell, uh, Landscape Architects. What we have is approximately $500,000 budget for improvements on playgrounds and site, uh, meaning earthworks, uh, electrical, lighting, um, and utilities on that site. Um, I hope you can see my, my screen. Uh, Liberty Park, is is bound uh you know by the by the interstate uh it's south of i-90 and a new library was just recently completed at fourth and um uh, uh oh, forgive me for the missing the name of the street here to the to, to the east um but our aquatic center is, is down to the south, and, and a big, uh, of course, a ball field is to the south. So we would like to improve this playground, and not only just improve it, but rebuild it and reshape it into a community playground. And community playground is defined by having more than 4,000 square feet of playground area. And that's that's a tenth of an acre. That's a that's a sizable spot. Um, there's a couple ball field, ball um, uh, play courts here, hoop fest courts, um, and there's also two significant structures in this area. Uh, there's a restroom building and also a um, uh, a shelter that overlooks, and it's sizable, and it overlooks one of our one of our. Um, um, uh, ball fields. Um, this schedule is probably too small for you to see, but what it explains is an entire um, uh, design development program uh, from when we would award this project today, hopefully, and all the way down to getting construction documents and getting a, a, a contractor started uh, towards the fall of this year in order to build out um, this new playground um, improvements and open in time for spring. And the contract is with Mike Terrell, Landscape Architects, as I suggested earlier. I offered this to Land Committee, and it was approved um, unanimously. 
However, there was one portion of it um, that I would like to get down here to just a little bit, which is the conceptual design of the shelters and the pavilion. And what we'd like to do is add this scope onto the original contract uh, that was approved by, by land committee. It adds about $5,000 or 1% of the overall value of the project to study these buildings. Um, not only to evaluate them, but bring them up to code, you know, ADA, uh, maybe these, the, you know, there's a couple of restrooms here that could be turned into family restrooms or at least upgrade them to, to current code and then incorporate them architecturally into the entire site and really, and really capture the entire um, uh, playground project as one holistic um, uh, design that's homogenous, not only with just this area, but with the new library that was just built and with the existing structures like the aquatic center and, 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 and link it to the existing ball field. So I went and negotiated heavily with, with Mike Terrell and you'll see there's a, a, a lot of words in here uh, of this uh, uh, contract um, that define exactly what they would offer. And it includes electrical engineering, civil engineering, architecture, uh, and, a, and mostly important to me, landscape architecture for this site, um, all the way to bid documents. So what I'm, what I'm asking the board to approve is and, and there's some red marks on here from, from what you may have gotten in your packet, is, is the design and development all the way to bid documents um, for the site, uh, meaning the playground and, 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 and utilities and whatnot, but also the schematic designs of what can be done with these buildings and how they fit in. And so I stopped it at the schematic design because that is where I would have to offer ideas back to the board to say, look, if we want to modify our buildings or if you want to tear them down and put in new ones, if we want to just um, uh, renovate them in a certain way or just leave them alone. I want to be able to come back to the board and say, here's, here's what we're looking at. Here's a, here are your options. And this is what it would take to design them. This is what we're looking at in terms of additional cost up and beyond the base budget of about $500,000 for Liberty Park. So that's what this contract is. It's, it's full landscape architecture design for the playground and the site. It's conceptual design for the buildings on site. And for that, um, uh, we can get this for 55,000, which is about 11% of the overall project cost. Um, I did not include uh, in the ask today, the construction administration, which is roughly $10,000. I'd like to hold that until a later date, once we get the full construction document uh, package put together. So, a little bit of expenses in terms of mileage, uh, printing and whatnot. I asked the board to consider approving Mike Turrell, landscape architects, for the design of Liberty Park in the amount of 55,955 tax exempt. And that would also include conceptual designs of our existing structures on site and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Barry, so this is about roughly $5,000 more than what we saw at land because we're adding in looking at those buildings. That's correct, Greta, yes. Great, that was a good idea. Does anyone else have uh, questions for Barry? I'm not hearing any. 
So in that case, I would like to move that we approve the Mike Terrell Landscape Architect, I believe, Design Services Contract, uh, Liberty Park Playground, the amount of $55,955 uh, tax, tax exempt. I second that motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will call for the question. All in favor, say aye and raise your hand or both. Aye. aye. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Barry. And I understand we had we had a um, Vitsky excavating change order for the carbon. Corbin Art Center sewer replacement, one of our favorite projects, the most one of the more interesting ones to hear about. And that was going to be on consent, but it got moved to the full agenda. So I'm do we have a presentation on that? You know, Bretta, Greta, I'll give you a brief um, a briefing, real a brief briefing, as brief as brief, I can. Brief briefing would be good. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so we'll do this really quickly. Um, the land committee last week approved the change order with Vitsky Excavating Incorporated for an amount that was incorrect. All of the change order forms um, for the actual work totaled to $35,000, $35,804.84. Our briefing paper stated $28,247. So the difference that you see there is that there was a second component of this change order, which is included in the backup and was included in the presentation that just wasn't noted right on the briefing paper. So it's a clerical error. And what we'd like to do is, is clarify that today and make a motion that the Vitsky excavating contract change order number one is in fact in the value of $35,804, not the 28,000 as stated in the committee meeting. So that's the brief briefing. Are there any questions? Looks like there's no questions. So I will go ahead and uh, make a motion that we approve the Bitsky Excavating Company Change Order Number One for the Corbin Art Center Emergency Sewer Replacement in the amount of $35,804.84 uh, plus tax. It's Kevin, I'll second. Kevin. Greta, you're muted. Whoops. Or get closer to your machine, maybe? Speaking quietly. There you um, go. <laughs> all in favor, say aye or raise your hand or both. Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, that motion carries unanimously. And in addition to our um, five or, I think, four or five action items that we had um, at Land Committee, there were four of them, we also got a report from Al uh, about changes within park ops and new positions. So if anybody has any questions about changing in, in uh, changes within park ops and new positions, they can ask Al. <laughs> um, that is my report, other than that the next land committee meeting is 3.30 p.m. March 2nd via WebEx. Thank you, Greta. And we'll move on to Recreation Committee. Sally and I think Jennifer Papich as well. Great. Hi, everyone. I We did not have any action items, which is pretty common, but we always have a lot of discussion and lots of great information. And this was no different. We had uh, quite a bit of amazing things that have occurred in the last year, which we don't really have time to go over right now. Um, we're going to touch on a couple of highlights, but I would encourage you to look at the meetings for some more detail and um, see what this amazing team is doing. 
But before I turn it over to um, Jennifer Papich, I just wanted to provide an update on a couple of things. One is the podium, since that is um, often um, people have been interested in learning a little more about that. The winter volleyball um, is underway, and there was um, 102 teams and 604 participants. Spring volleyball uh, registration is now open. And then also um, track and field, there was two clinics, and the clinics were for the at-risk youth. They already had one on the uh, February 9th, and the second one is coming up on the 16th. And uh, Currently, every, there's uh, work being done on 2000, um, on um, 2022 fall programming for, um, excuse me, um, track and field and 2023 um, cornhole. So there's some work being done on the podium, more to come there. Um, I also just, I really wanna give a big shout out to the rec team again as success and the results that you're about to see um, don't just come because we do things the same way. They're coming because the team is changing, innovating, and um, finding opportunities to grow more programs in spite of the ongoing challenges. Um, and so Jennifer is going to take the floor and um, present on the team's amazing growth from 2019 to 2021 and um, also share some exciting uh, funding news. So take it away, Jennifer. Thank you, Sally, and thank you so much for the kind words. I couldn't agree more. We have an amazing recreation team that always goes above and beyond for our community, so we're so fortunate. Um, I will go ahead and I kind of am going to do it a little bit out of order, if you don't mind. I'm going to do it backwards from what you said. I will start <laughs> with um, the funding opportunity, which is so exciting. Um, the recreation team has been waiting so long to talk about this, but we had to wait till we officially were awarded the funds. So this opportunity um, was a really collaborative effort with um, OSPI, the Washington Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction and Association of Washington Cities. They really wanted this money to go out to municipalities um, doing parks and recreation. So Washington Recreation and Park Association administered this funding opportunity. Uh, $10 million in funding that went out across the state for parks and recreation municipalities, mostly focusing on outdoor summer programs. This is just for summer 22, uh, 2022, um, focusing on youth that have been historically underserved and most impacted by the pandemic. There were three applications in total. Riverfront did one as well, but I will let them share their own information on that. But the ones that uh, Recreation applied for were uh, Spokane's Community Outdoor Recreation Experience, or SCORE. We applied for $37,694 for that program. And a Youth Summer Recreation Access for All program, where we applied for $68,701. And we we're awarded both of those funding opportunities, and we're so excited to get to work uh, this summer providing those opportunities to our community. The SCORE program that Ryan Griffith is going to lead the charge on is going to be working with all the centers you just heard about, the youth centers, Northeast Youth Center, uh, West Central Community Center, MLK, and the Southwest Spokane Community Center, working with their day camp programs that they have to um, emphasize the outdoors. So we're going to work with them and provide free of cost outdoor experiences for their youth that attend their facilities. Um, six to eight hours each day, we're gonna take them and expose them to the great outdoors. <laughs> Kayaking, stand up paddle boarding, hiking, bike tours, and more. Um, we're gonna provide everything, the staffing, the equipment, the safety information, the skills, um, lunch, education, the whole, the full meal deal, and we're so excited to do this. We love working with our centers, and this is just another way to give back to them and, and increase that partnership. And we will continue to keep you updated on the progress of this program as summer goes on. And then we had the Youth Summer Recreation Access for All program. And this is really a robust scholarship program. We really wanted to break down those cost barriers that prohibit some people from participating in our programs. 
we always do get uh, generous contributions from the Parks Foundation. Um, but as you can see, this dollar amount goes above and beyond, and we really want to, to let everybody who wants to participate, who has multiple children, who sometimes are um, not able to register for our programs because of the cost, or just one child that wants to do things for multiple weeks during the summer and cannot due to the expense. Um, so we're going to be doing a real robust effort in marketing to get the word out about these summer camp scholarships that we have for summer of 2022. Um, also in this funding, a percentage of that uh, dollar amount, about 3300 is going to support a certified medical employee to attend our Sunshine Day Camp. This is really critical staff position because it helps with those uh, those folks that attend the Therapeutic Recreation Sunshine Day Camp that might need some additional one-on-one -on -one medical care, um, whether that is with medications or toileting or uh, feeding or other things like that. So it expands our opportunities to those folks that we're normally not able to attend that program. Um, also, we're, we're purchasing some uh, small equipment expenses through this funding as well to uh, increase the safety and the, the overall experience of our program without having to relay those expenses on to our participants. So that is our um, SEEK funding opportunity that we are so excited about. And yeah, yay. <laughs> um, now I'm going to uh, mention the slide that Sally was talking about. This was really a great idea. Sally and Greta both really requested um, seeing this, this year-over-year -year comparison of recreation programs. Um, and what I love about this is it shows 2019, pre-pandemic, the full pandemic year, and then as we're coming out of it. Um, and we were outstanding. We were just beyond thrilled to notice that everything that we did in 2021, with the exception of Open Swim because of obvious reasons, um, are above and beyond pre-pandemic. We offered 20 more programs than we did pre-pandemic. We serviced over 2,000 more participants than pre-pandemic, and we had 711 more athletic field bookings than in pre-pandemic. Um, another thing that I really want to call out during the pandemic year that you'll notice, we did only offer 488 programs because of our limited abilities, but 19% of those were new programs. Um, on an average year, 8% of our programs are new, but it really, really demonstrates how much we tried to go above and beyond and provide programs that people could actually participate in given the pandemic and all the quarantines and um, lockdowns that we were going through during that year. So staff really went above and beyond to create those opportunities for the community. So that is something that um, I'm almost most proud of, but I just am so proud of this team. They have done more with less, and they have wonderful attitudes, and they have such a passion for working with our community. So I just, I can't thank them enough. And then I just have one more quick recap. Very quickly, thank you for putting up with all these slides for recreation. Um, this is just a quick what recreation winter report of what's going on. We have our amazing uh, winter activity guide with one of my favorite covers. I absolutely love that. Um, as Deanna mentioned, it's in the Inlander, uh, the, 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 what is it, the Inlander racks. And so every time I go and see it at a, at a grocery store or places, it just sticks out, which is wonderful. Um, even this winter, compared to last winter, 2022 winter is already tracking ahead of 2021 participation for winter activities. So we're looking again to increase those participation numbers. We have programs like the Therapeutic Recreation Powerlifting that's coming back after two years gone because of the pandemic. We're able to use that program again, and the participants could not be more happy. Um, as Sally mentioned before, we have a huge winter volleyball program, and we're so excited to have spring volleyball in the podium. Uh, we cannot wait. Uh, right now, we're currently working and finalizing spring and summer programming, and our spring guide will be out in early March, and this is a digital-only copy. So that is all things good in recreation. Indeed, it is good. Wow. Anything else, Sally? No, I just, again, thank you. And Jennifer, thanks for presenting. And, um, and, and thank you to you and your entire team for amazing, amazing stuff. 
our next um, rec meeting will be held virtual on March 2nd at 5.15. Thank you. You know, the increase um, back to at least uh, 2019 levels or beyond really shows how important our parks and our park programs are and how in demand they are and how aware people are now of how necessary that is for their health and wellness. So thank you. Okay, Riverfront Park Committee, Nick Sumner and company. All right, All right. yeah, we did meet and we did have an action item that went through the consent agenda. Uh, concerning the South Suspension Ridge Riverfront Park. If you're interested, please read our minutes. Um, we also had a couple informational items, uh, one that was tied to the SEEK funding that uh, Recreation got to um, that Jill Reeves presented about doing some uh, education type of programming in Riverfront Park. Uh, again, if you want more information, please reach out to her or read our minutes. Um, we also talked about the King Cole Commemoration Project, and I believe Chris Wright is here to actually give the board a little bit of an update about that and conversation, so I'll let you take it away, Chris. Thank you, Nick. Um, yeah, I'll be very brief. I'm happy to report that uh, the Friends of Riverfront Articles of Incorporation have gone out to the state, so in a matter of days or weeks, we should be an official nonprofit corp. Um, we will hold our first meeting of directors, I hope the uh, first week of March or so, uh, elect our officers and, and get our corporate status uh, well underway. So that's uh, long and coming. I'm happy to see it happen. And um, we also um, will be signing an agreement with Anovia uh, to help us with the King Cole commemoration fundraising effort. Um, as soon as we know we're officially a corporation. Um, so that'll be good. It'll be uh, with Barry's help and Garrett's help, we have been uh, getting our fundraising materials and strategy put together. Um, and uh, so we're, we're on our way. Yeah, that's awesome. I know the Friends of Riverfront Park is something we've been talking about well before I got on the board, but definitely my whole time on the board. So it's, it's uh, exciting to see that come about. So thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. You bet. All right. Um, we also had a discussion item on the Lions Club, uh, Lions Club Centennial Project, and it was a good conversation. I think there's more to discuss about that going forward. Um, but just know that we're uh, Lions Club is interested in doing something in the park, and um, we were, we're interested in hearing more anyway, for sure. Uh, and then John gave his January 2022 operations report. Um, it was nice to hear um, about some of the things that are have gone on, that are going to go on. I know I did ask the question about our concert series, and we haven't gotten any information on that yet, but we will soon. Very excited to see what our uh, another full year of concert series can bring to Spokane. I know there were some exciting uh, shows last year, and I, I think that we're hopefully in for some exciting shows this year, too. Um, other than that, it was a great meeting, and we will meet on March 7th. Thank you, Nick, and thank you, Chris. Good to have you back again, Chris. Once a park board president, it just gets under your skin and can't stay away. All right. Moving on to finance, Bob Anderson. Uh, the Finance Committee met Tuesday, February 8th at 3 p.m. via WebEx. We did have an action item, and... That is to approve a memorandum of understanding with Spokane School District 81 regarding the official dog park. And that will be presented by Garrett. So take it away, Garrett. Thank you, Bob. Yes, we're talking about dogs. Um, you know, this was a, a great, I think a, a great outcome for, as, as most of you are aware of, uh, a fairly intense situation, negative uh, situation with, with the school district. And we, we hopped on as the opportunity, let's make this a win-win uh, for the future using our natural uh, master plan and natural land uh, process and moving forward. So in your packet, you have the full uh, MOU, but I'm just gonna hit some highlights. And, you know, early on, so in discussions with the school district leadership, we agreed to work together to see um, what we were calling the unofficial dog park was going to be displaced on the South Hill, and this was previously what was considered the buffer zone 
or the landfill outside of city limits, but under the control of the City of Spokane U Utilities Division? And how could we work together um, to inform using our natural lands master planning process of how we can prioritize dog parks and off-leash areas throughout the city of Spokane. And so recognizing the need for these amenities, and this was through our survey process identified as a, 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 a high uh, priority uh, for dog parks and off-leash areas, that we would look through a process and a study to determine potential locations and work together on creating what we would call a citywide type size and location park or dog park study um, and, and participating with, with the school districts along that. So when we get into the different responsibilities, I broke it out into city responsibilities, school district responsibilities. And for us, you know, it's completing as, as we've uh, worked through the process and updated the board uh, a couple months ago on finishing our master plan by the second quarter of this year. Fleet of the, the citywide uh, dog park study to identify those potential locations, sizes, you know, layouts, amenities, approximate average costs and budgets for these uh, different facilities, and then convene an advisory committee uh, for the recommendations of these locations and what type of amenities. And I think this is where we found a lot of benefit of the passion uh, of dog parks and off-leash areas and using that passion and the connections with the school districts and also our study groups within our master planning process to come together to identify these potential uh, opportunities. And with that, they would come back with a study to a recommendation with the park board, with one of those recommendations being taken to the next step, and that was, would be with the partnership of the school district to actually implement a dog park and off-leash area. Um, the study will also um, uh, we'll we'll uh, look at the proposed design and all the other supporting materials necessary to move forward with construction, and we want that to be complete by October of 2022. And um, also on the city side, with our great planning staff, with Nick and Barry leading the way, uh, we would designate a person to help manage the design and administration of that um, dog park study on, on city property. And I, I want to emphasize city property, and this is another great partnership with the utilities, we didn't want to solely look at park land. We wanted to look at city of Spokane land across the board um, because there is a number of different departments that do own land within the city as well, and we want to make sure that that's a part of that study and that's part of that consideration. And then the city also at the end of this, um, at the no, no cost to the school district, would uh, also maintain and operate this facility and or agents. So I think this is another important uh, piece to this puzzle as well. Um, we have a lot of great partnerships across the board and current dog parks that are managed by third party operators to help us out as a city. who are really the experts on how to manage um, the pets and also their owners in these types of facilities. And then the school district, they'll participate with us along the way and I think here's the big win-win as well. At, at no cost to the city, um, the school district shall fund all the design, engineering, and construction to develop the official dog park of wherever that recommendation through this group in the park board where we deem fit uh, for this implementation of this facility. And then also as a joint, um, the city and the school district will work together uh, for final completion of April of 2023, because that's when, um, if you're aware, they, they um, stood up a temporary dog park location um, adjacent to the school of where the new middle school will be built. But at some point, that's, that is going to be need to be taken down because sports fields will need to be constructed in that place. So we want to make sure that we have, limit the disruption as much as we can. And so those are those target dates. But if we can't meet those target dates, we're going to work together to make sure that we're seamless and, and limit that disruption in the level of service. So with that, that's just the quick highlights of the MOU uh, in your packet. Is there any questions for me? Good to have the Spokane Public Schools on board with us. Thank you. Thank you, Garrett. If 
If no questions, then I will move that we approve the memorandum of understanding with the Spokane School District 81 regarding the official dog park. I'll second. This is Barb. Thank you, Barb. Any further comments, questions? Again? All right, then uh, we'll put it up for the vote. All those in favor, respond with saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, Garrett, you got a uh, MOU. Thank you. Good. Appreciate it. Anything Sorry. else on finance, Bob? Certainly. You wouldn't, <laughs> let, you wouldn't think I'd let it go that short, would you? The, the February finance meeting due to 13th month and year end adjustments does not have financial reports presented. Instead of this, we usually take this as an opportunity to get some financial training from Mark Bunig and the rest of uh, the wonderful accounting staff. And this year we asked them to give us a little education on capital projects, um, the difference between capital expenses and so on. And so Nick Hammond started it out by presenting the parks 2022 capital plan update. And that included information relevant to Parks 21 design and construction projects with a combined total cost of $6.2 million for next year. And as Nick referred to it as the two and a half bridge plan, there's two and a half bridges being completed with this. And Parks also has 19 planning and redesign projects on the 2022 docket. So they will be very busy. For more details regarding this update, make sure to review the minutes again from the February 8th Finance Committee. Mark Bunig next presented a report comparing capital to operating budgets. It was an excellent training session that included many more details than you would like me to read. So again, I would suggest reviewing the finance minutes. The meeting was adjourned at 3.51 p.m and the next meeting scheduled for March 8th at 3 p.m. via WebEx. Thank you, Bob. Do you want to slide right into development and volunteer? Certainly. The DVC committee met via WebEx Tuesday, January 18th at 9 a.m. Essential progress has been made filling out the rosters for both the, the DVC and the CAC that reports to the, or works through the DVC. As of the 118 meeting, the DVC had seven of eight slots with the confirmed candidate for the final member at large position. So basically the DVC will be completed as of the 118 membership wise, as of the 118 for, for our next meeting, excuse me. The DVC CAC has seven of 12 committed members with numerous others who have expressed interest, but without a formal commitment. Potential members are discussed at meetings with current members asked to contact them. Taking the next step was our final discussion item. As policy and process have developed to pass the formative steps and membership slots are filling in, it is time for the committee to focus on their purpose or on our purpose. And that's community engagement and enhancement. Some activities already on the docket, the 50th Expo year anniversary, the King Cole recognition, working with Friends of Riverfront Park, working with Andy Boyd and the Friends of Spokane Golf, and coordinating with the CAC to facilitate their projects or events. The next CAC advisory committee meeting with Kelly Brown as chair is scheduled for February 24th, again via WebEx. And the next DVC meeting is scheduled for March 17th at 3 p.m. also by WebEx. And that's all. Thank you, Bob. And I want to give a shout out to Kelly Brown, who is present on this meeting. She is a great CAC president. She happens to be president of Friends of Manitou, but is holding the court on the full group there. And she is an example, along with Chris Wright and Andy Boyd, who are both working on MOUs uh, for their Friends of groups. 
Uh, they are examples of our champion citizens who are doing so much good for us and are really helping the park board reach out into the community. So just, you know, these people don't get paid except with emotional appreciation currency. And so here is your appreciation. We truly do value your input. Thank you. Uh, in terms of a president's report, I have just a couple of things. I'm asking for a task force to be assembled to take a look at our charter. We are a unique board with a unique charter that deserves respect and a deeper dive, so we'll be looking into that. Tandem to that are our committee assignments, park board members. If I haven't already talked to you about committee assignments, I will be doing so. Um, I am thrilled to say that Hannah Pitts has agreed to be our next bylaws chair. Anytime you have somebody wanting to be a bylaws chair, let me tell you, you want to send them roses and chocolates. Um, that's quite a job. If you have items for the bylaws committee, I've already received one item from another committee chair, um, please let us know. Let Hannah and I know, uh, because this is the time to make that the vital document that it should be. And also, if you have requests for a 30,000-foot view of what the park board ought to be doing as we take a look at reaching out into the communities and coordinating with our master plan, Greta and I have been talking about park land use policies, and so things like that, um, things at that higher level, please communicate with me or with Bob, and let's get the bylaws committee up and running. So, Hannah, it will not, I think, be a short committee this year, but it will do good work. Uh, let's see. I think that's all I have on my president's report. Conservation Futures, Greta Gilman. I have nothing to report on Conservation Futures. We're in the holding pattern waiting to negotiate real estate deals. In a shout out to Conservation Futures for the funding for the tree planting mentioned in urban forestry. Parks Foundation, Barb Ritchie, and I know Terry Fortner's here too. Terry, I think, had to drop off the line. If not, I just want to say thank you. Oh, there's Terry. I see Terry. She stayed on. Um, so she can pick up the slack of what I might leave out there. I try to aspire to uh, give a presentation like uh, Vice Chair Bob Anderson, but um, let's see if I can do it justice. Um, the Parks Foundation Board met on January 27th. They meet for a solid one hour, and they get a lot done from 4.30 to 5.30. Um, this time around, they, I have the pleasure of reporting that they increased their 2022 um, grant budget from 32000 to 50000 which is awesome. That means more money um, and community support for our, our county and city parks. Um, they underwent a pretty aggressive planning process, and I love this idea of start, stop, and continue. So they look at all the broad brush of the activities and um, strategies that they utilize throughout the year, and they look at what, what they accomplished and what they need to stop and maybe what they need to continue. So it, it's about three pages of work that they did for, um, for that. And um, items they focus on are like the goals and, and such during the year, but then also uh, like give butter, which raises money, but then also maybe looking at other opportunities to invest in the county parks too. So um, spending a little bit more time with other parks in the region, I think will be their goal for 23. Um, they are a lean and mighty machine to people. Uh, and so, um, you know, they can get spread pretty thin. So I, I really appreciate the focus that Terry and Yvonne give um, to the Spokane Parks Foundation. So with that, I'll um, give my time over to Terry if she has any specific, um, or back to you, Chairwoman Ogden. Beautifully said, Barb. Thank you. Thank you for your support. All right. Thank you, ladies. Council Member Bingle, anything to say today? Councilmember Bingle had to go because he had another meeting, but this is his legislative assistant, Nicolette Ockeltree, and he just wanted to say that he's been supporting uh, many of the ARP requests that the Parks Board has been putting forth, and we're really happy to work hand-in-hand -hand with you guys to make sure that you guys get funded for the things that you guys need. Nicolette, we are thankful for you and the councilman. So great work and great partnership, and we look forward to a good partnership in the future. Thank you. Director Garrett Jones. All right, thank you. This is always a good time. It's my thank you tour at the end of the meeting. But uh, I want to I want to thank uh, Jennifer and Bob for their leadership and continued leadership here in 2022, and for Jennifer putting up with my dozen of texts a week, phone calls, um, 
and my brain never shutting off, but I appreciate the great communication that we have, uh, Jennifer, and we're looking forward to another great year. So thank you for your leadership. And uh, thanks to, for the staff. I mean, what great, great presentations today. Um, it just, it, it makes me so happy to, to be in this place and, and to see this impact that we're, we're really giving back to the community. Um, also really wanna thank, uh, again, the city council for their support since last meeting, we, they did get uh, an unanimous approval of the $1.45 million to fund the rest of the Don Cardon Bridge, uh, which is a massive success for us uh, to implement one of our biggest risk projects and will be a great addition to the community. And then also uh, with the support of the university district and helping us um, get the, the, the nice to have type um, additions to the bridge and their support of another $70,000 towards the overlooks and amenities for the Don Cardon Bridge and their partnership. And then also, you know, with the great presentation with the SYNC uh, funding and that over, you know, $130,000. And it really, um, our staff put to great, together great proposals to really target youth in our community. And again, we heard from families during the pandemic, like was mentioned before, what a needed asset with these programs and these activities to get outside, to learn new things and, and do it in a way that takes away those barriers. So really ha um, happy to see that happen this year. And the hope is to continue those programs as well in the future. And then also, uh, finally, I, we do have a special guest here and it's um, Kate Green, the executive director of the Northeast um, Youth Center. And she's been, with the center the past 16 years. And then unfortunately she will be leaving the youth center, but I wanna personally thank Kate for her support, her commitment, her partnership with Spokane Parks and Recreation. Um, you can't think of another person that is more passionate about the youth um, in the community of which she served in the Northeast Spokane. So thank you. And we um, really wanna say, um, wish you well on your new adventures somehow to get you our, uh, our Parks and Recreation coin here, Kate. But again, we just want to thank you for your dedication to Spokane's treasured Parks and Recreation programs and helping for improving the quality of life for all. So thank you for your countless years of support and we wish you well. With that, that is the end of my report. Oh, great. Well, Kate, thank you so much. Again, you're one of those champions from our city that makes this such a great place. And had I known you were waiting 90 minutes for accolades, I would have moved you up further on the agenda. My apologies. Oh. So um, normally I don't people wait that long, but I'm sure that the accolades are well-deserved. So again, thank you very much. Well, if there is nothing else for the good of the order, I know there's a Gonzaga game. And so um, I will let everybody go because priorities. Um, so uh, nothing else. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Uh, thank you again for your confidence, for your patience with, ev with everything that we have to do, and for your investment, uh, your passion for parks. We'll see you again soon.